Hello and welcome to a pretty simple but important video. Today we're going to talk about brewing equipment. This is for pretty much all home brewing in general. So we're going to go through three levels of equipment that you'll need. Level one is like you're just making your first thing, just getting started. Here's what's going to help you be a better mead maker. Level two, we go a little more in depth and it's like you're diving deeper in the hobby. And level three is like I'm all in, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to brew a ton of stuff and I want to make it really easy. A lot of these tools today just make brewing easier for you. So of course, I'm going to say there's a precursor to level one. Precursor to level one is like no equipment. It's possible to brew without zero equipment. I have a, vi a video on it. It's a brewing a basically a grocery store mead. You can check that out. I don't recommend it because it will give you mixed results. Some essential, I guess some basic equipment will actually really help you in your conquest to be a better brewer. So we're going to go ahead and jump into level one. Now I know some people are going to watch this video and go, well, I've home brewed before and never used any equipment and it's tasted amazing. Well, that's great. I'm going to tell you right now that with some extra help, extra equipment, you'll be guaranteed to make good stuff. It gets a little bit loosey goosey whenever you don't have the right stuff. First of all, I'm going to highlight this right here. A hydrometer. A hydrometer is your way for measuring gravity. Specific gravity is uh, how we get the alcohol content of things. You take your hydrometer and you put this into your brew before it ferments, your beer, mead, wine, cider. You record the number on the side. After it finishes fermenting, you record, you put it in again, record the numbers, put it into a formula on screen, and that tells you your ABV or alcohol by volume. You might need something else to be able to float it in. You need a tall container. This is a graduated cylinder or tube, essentially. This is big enough to float your liquid in. Essentially, if you have anything tall enough, you'll be fine. Some other things that are helpful, a turkey baster. Turkey baster will help you actually take and move liquid out and in. This one is, um, a metal one. I have a plastic one. I don't like as much. This metal one was like five bucks Walmart and uh, I've been using it for a long time. Um, we have a couple different kinds of airlocks. So we've got an S airlock. It's a one piece airlock and essentially liquid goes in and as when you put this on top of the brew, the bubbling will go out the top. It'll keep any bugs, anything from getting into this brew, which is helpful. You also have a three piece airlock. I like these a little more because you can clean them. Essentially, this thing right here is three pieces, hence the name. And it does the same thing. You fill up to the a middle line here and then you put your lid on and it bubbles and does its thing. What's really nice about this is it's super easy to clean. Three pieces are much harder to clean, in my opinion. You need a few other things like this is still level one. I am all about shaking carboys and stuff, but when you get to a very large batch and you're doing like five gallons, it's hard to shake and mix up that kind of liquid. So I recommend getting this right here. This is a stirring rod. And by the way, all of these things, there'll be a giant list down below. If you would like to purchase them, Amazon links, they will be affiliate links. So if you purchase it, you will be kicking back a little bit of money to me, to the channel. You attach this to a drill. You'll need a drill for this. And you spin it up. This thing is super nice. I use it literally almost every brew. It makes my mixing process quicker. You do need a drill to do that, but it's nice. When you're trying to move your brew over, you'll need two, one of two things. You'll need um, to safely do this. You'll need an a auto siphon and tubing. So I have two different sizes. This is for a like a three gallon carboy, a little bit bigger. This is for a, about a one gallon carboy. It's a mini auto siphon. Both of these are really nice and I recommend to have both of them for your different size carboys. You'll also need some tubing. Ba -bum. Specifically for the size racking cane you have. I've got a couple brushes here for cleaning. These are nice. So here's, uh, we just ran through all this list. Here's all of the list of everything I recommend for level one. Okay, now level two. 
a lot of this stuff will stay the same. There's just a few things I would recommend to take it to the next level. So the first thing is a waterless bung. Now these right here are super cool because they require zero water. They go on top of a carboy. They auto automatically like burp is what we call it. Essentially, as the CO2 goes into the bottom here, it just, the lid lifts up and it expels the CO2. Again, it's waterless. These are a bit expensive. You can buy them in packs, but normally about five of these is gonna run you about 20 to 25 bucks. However, they don't break, super nice. Um, I do have one note on this. There's a, a fantastic dude. His name is in the Discord or my Discord is Tool, and he created a uh, basically 3D print mold for these. You can, uh, I think he put it out for free. I'll put it down in the description, but you can 3D print the mold, put in your silicone, and essentially make these for yourself. So I wanna credit him, because the dude spent a long time on it, and he's a baller, so thank you, Tool. This is a life changer. Then the next life changer that's helpful, total, not totally necessary. Again, this is stuff that you're like stepping forth, like, hey, I wanna go a little further with brewing. I wanna make some upgrades. This is a stainless steel racking cane. What's nice about this is that it's easy to clean. It comes apart completely. Um, and it has like, it just has some nice features. I did a whole review on this thing. But stainless steel means that you can easily put it in the washer. You can put it in the oven if you wanted to just really kill all of the bacteria and stuff on it. Um, so I really, I really like this, recommend using it. It'll be down in the description, of course. Then we get into some equipment that is super nice to have and will make you a better brewer. So we talked about your hydrometer, which is this thing right here. This is a Herculometer. It is a plastic hydrometer. So the nice thing about this right here is it does not break. Most hydrometers are glass. You can break it, but you got to be a little bit of a psychopath to want to break it, break this. So, um, this doesn't break plastic. If you have a normal hydrometer, you know that that right there probably would have scared you with a Herculometer. Not so scary. Next up <clears throat> we have what we call a refractometer. So this thing right here, is another way to measure gravity. This is really handy for uh, beer brewers or anybody that does a lot of like uh, heating of your liquid because what you do is you take a small amount of liquid and you put it on the front of this refractometer. It's a blue lens. You close this sucker down and then you look through it and I'll show you an example right now of what you would see if you look through it. On the left side, you see a bricks scale, which is another way to measure alcohol or sugar content. And on the right side, you see a SG wart, starting gravity. So the SG is the same thing as your hydrometer. You measure your gravity or your bricks before the fermentation starts. And then if you want, well, then once your fermentation's done, you take and do another sample, put it on there, look through it, bum bum. There's a um, calculator, take the numbers, whoosh, you smack them in there and it tells you your final ABV. There is a little bit of controversy in that sometimes these are not as accurate. This is like a $20 refractometer, so it's not the most accurate, but I'll tell you in a moment, a more accurate version. So refractometer is really nice. Next up we have, we get into the pH or acidity of brews. <clears throat> so this is from Hannah Instruments, not, not, not a person, Hannah Instruments. So this is a pH meter. Now, why would you care about pH in your brewing? If you're brewing a beer, a wine, a mead, um, cider, if your brew is too acidic, oftentimes your yeast can more than likely freak out. And when they freak out, they put off off flavors, which can kind of mess up your brew. You don't want to mess up your brew. So having your pH reading early on can tell you if you need to adjust your pH. So I highly recommend something like this. This is from Hannah Instruments. It's a um, less expensive version. This is like a $20, I think 20, 20 or $30 for this guy. Super easy. It's pretty accurate. It's not as accurate as the one I'm going to talk about in a second in level three, but that's okay. So those are some pieces of equipment that are next step, next generation. Um, I would not recommend that 
anybody, like when you first get started, unless you just really wanna dive deep, you don't need level two equipment necessarily. Just like if you wanna dive even deeper from level two, we've got some other things. Okay, so in level three, we've got the big boys. These guys are like, hey, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go deep, make my life really easy with brewing. So I'm gonna start off with one of my favorites. I really like, I use this thing a lot. I have two actually, I'm, I'm about to run a test. I have a tilt hydrometer. It's a tilt wireless hydrometer. Essentially what happens is you float this bad boy in the brew and there's an app the Tilt app that you use. With the app, it tracks your fermentation temperature, your uh, gravities as you go along. It tracks the day and the time. I'll show you like a spreadsheet example. But this thing right here tracks all of that progress for you without you having to ever take a gravity reading. The only thing with these is they're kind of expensive, which is why I'm putting them in level three. This thing I think was, yeah, it was 130 five dollars on Amazon um, not not cheap but again this is level three I highly recommend this battery life is super good I'll do a full review on one of these one day but not yet okay so you're still wanting to dive deep you're still with me great um, we're gonna talk about pH again this is another pH meter from Hannah instruments this is the halo 2 now I've actually been using this some and one thing I love about it is it is very accurate it's a little more expensive it's about hundred and thirty dollars I believe for this guy but it is more accurate the other one simpler one that they have the twenty dollars only goes up to like let's say 3.9 pH. This thing will take you down to like 3.98. Like it gets more specific, it's more accurate. Um, it's really nice and I, I use this thing and um, they have a warranty. I believe they have a warranty for, for these products. So pH, more expensive pH meter, more accuracy, which is nice. Then we also have another HANA instrument. I have a lot of stuff from them, and I'll talk about that in a second. This is a digital refractometer. It's the, so essentially, the, the so this digital version takes away all your need to do the eyeglass looking thing, trying to be accurate. With this thing, you literally take and you put a small, I'll show you some, some video of it, you put a small sample of your liquid after you calibrate it. There's a, you use distilled water and calibrate it with that. Then you take small little pipette, you put just a little bit of your wort of your post fermentation brew onto there and you can click read and it will tell you the bricks, automatically tell you the sugar content. Now this is another bricks scale. This is not starting gravity. You have to use a calculator to sort it out, but it does it for you and it's accurate, like literally super accurate. Again, a little expensive, but, but very nice. This also has a warranty. I'm certain that this has a warranty. So uh, if something goes wrong with yours, you can say, hey, um, I need a little help with that. Uh, I do want to speak to all of these HANA instruments that I have been telling you about here. Um, I actually am collaborating with them on some stuff and I'm affiliated with them. So let's say you saw one of these three pieces of equipment and you're like, hey, I really want that. There's an affiliate link down below and uh, that's that's a way for you to help support the channel. Also check out their stuff. So check out that link below. So the last piece of equipment that's level three, arguably like level four, I don't even have one because they're kind of expensive, but I've seen them and they're cool. There's this thing called the Easy Dens and it is from, it's a, it's a portable gravity tester. Essentially what you do is you take, again, another small sample of any liquid that normally is like a wine, beer, mead, cider. You put it into there and it will tell you this, uh, the specific gravity of that. So where we used that thing, or I saw it used recently, was um, at our mead competition. There were a couple brews that came across our plate and we were like, man, this thing is like really sweet or whatever. Well, we, you could take a small little sample of that mead and put it into there and say, oh, look, the final gravity for this thing is 1050 or 1 1.050. It's very expensive though, so I don't have one, but if I was made of money, I would have one. Or if they would like to send me one, I will gladly take one. So 
Um, but that's another thing that's there. All right, so here, here's level one, equipment you need to be proficient. Level two. Level three. And then of course, there's a bunch of other possible things you can buy. If you wanna get really crazy, Hannah Instruments actually has some even more high quality stuff that you can purchase. One thing I'm really looking forward to working with one day that I'll, that I'll probably buy from them because I really wanna do it is a portable oxygen uh, meter so I can check out how much oxygen is in that brew. They have um, titration systems so you can check acidity and all of these other things. Essentially, the, the ladder of equipment you can get keeps growing, but if you're just starting out, start with level one. Please, I know it's a lot of stuff, but I promise you it'll help your brewing. Don't just start pouring your brew all the time. You're gonna lead to oxygen in it when you don't want there to be any oxygen. Take some gravity readings, buy a Herculometer, go buy a $10 hydrometer, take some gravity readings at least, or you know, refractometer, bricks readings. But get the basics because I promise you, you'll be much happier in the long run. I can't tell you how many people I know and how many comments and posts I see of people saying, I started my brew, I didn't have all of these things, what do I do now? I don't have any information. Well, I'm sorry, Paul, I can't tell you what to do with your brew because you didn't give me any information on what's going on with it. So having the information to say, my brew started at 1.082 and it's at 1.020 is massive. Get some good equipment, go and brew, make some beer, wine, mead cider, subscribe to this channel, and I'll be back soon with more content. Cheers.